Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to OLC TV for some more A World Betrayed DLC for Total War Three Kingdoms Perfect Start series, this time looking at Sun Tzu, the Little Conqueror. So his starting situation is hard. I wouldn't say militarily it's hugely challenging. I would say, however, your economy does suffer because Sun Tzu, a bit like Cao Cao, has a lot of very good generals who join him very early on. Um, who can be a little bit challenging to keep happy um, and they cost a lot of money. Uh, there are ways around it however with his campaign um, and certainly with how his court positions grow and how as people level up they can affect certain things um, because it's not the same as standard uh, Han warlord courts but yeah he is a little bit challenging for the old finances early on which does force you to commit to risky attacks to keep the money flowing in um amongst other things uh that related him so he is a vanguard um as you'll know from the other start dates um and he has a plus 100 charge bonus for cavalry and plus 15 melee damage for all shock cavalry this um for me i think is is one of those things where i look at this and think well that's all well and good, but we all know that the southern uh, armies did not really do cavalry in the same way as the northern armies. So, although you do get cavalry, you do get some nice new cavalry as well. And not just the mercenary cavalry, but the handmade guard as well, which are really quite tasty melee cavalry units. Um, he, uh, you know, it, to be honest, his stats would be better served uh, for one of the northern armies where they have and certainly someone like Gong Sun Zan I think should have more of his type of stats and he should have something that's a little bit more suited towards just pure aggression melee damage for uh, all units rather than just cavalry however the vanguard's uh, setup does suit him for recklessness because his faction specialization is reckless luck so he starts out with a full bar of luck that ticks down every single turn and when the luck runs out he dies that's it he, he's he's finished so you need to keep his luck high and you keep his luck high by completing things like uh, the ambitions of uh woo or um which are little sort of quests that will basically say um conquer the homelands which will be changsha um, and once you've conquered that, that will give him a plus two towards his luck. So instead of losing, say, ten luck per turn, you then lose eight. And that can be reduced all the way down so you don't lose any per turn and just extend his life over that period of time. Um, the luck, when it's high, does grant you extreme speed. It's not joking. Um, it does grant you serious speed on the campaign map. Um, and with the ambitions, like I said, you not only... Uh, can slow down the luck depletion but you also get certain bonuses as well um, which can be prestige can be morale for men um, you know satisfaction increasing melee damage stuff like that um, he also has completely unique ministerial positions with unique faction effects which we'll go into as we enter the game um, because it's a little difficult to explain without the picture in front of me um, and he has some extra unique features. So Sun Jian had all the mercenaries that you'll know from before, they're no different. But he also has the Handmade Guard, which I mentioned earlier, um, which are bodyguards for nobles, and they are really quite good. Um, and the Tiger Guard, which are assault infantry, um, available for characters rank 6 or higher. So they're, top, they're, they're one of the top tier infantry you can get for this faction. They block melee attack, they're good against mounted. Um, and you know, heavily shielded, heavily armored. They're really solid frontline troops. Now, Sun Tzu, uh, for those of you who don't know that much about him, was the eldest son of Sun Jian. Uh, Sun Jian was a general who worked for Yuan Shu, um, especially during the coalition against Dong Zhuo. He was one of the few fighting generals. Uh, Sun Jian, unfortunately, was killed after uh, Yuan Shu um, ordered him to attack Lu Biao. Um, he was ambushed and killed probably by troops led by uh, Liu Biao's subordinate Huang Zhu. Um, now, after uh, his father's death, Sun Tzu took his family to uh, his uncle's land, Wu Jing, which is this blue territory here, um, where he spent two years in mourning for his family. It was quite a standard period of time to be in mourning for his father. Um, after that, he returned to Yuan Shu, 
with a militia force that he'd built up in Wu Jing's territory and uh, basically impressed Yuan Shu uh, quite a lot. And Yuan Shu gifted him his father's old retinue and officers, um, which wasn't a huge amount of men, but it did come because I think Yuan Shu was probably stinting him a little bit on the numbers, but it did come with some very famous generals. Um, and Yuan Shu did promise certain territories to uh, Sun Tzu that didn't end up going Sun Tzu's way. And so Sun Tzu eventually got fed up and we're sort of at that period now where Sun Tzu is looking to leave Yuan Shu, but he doesn't want to leave through warfare. He wants to have a, a decent deal with him where he can go to the south, take over his homelands and expand that territory and become his own person. So yeah, that's where we have Sun Tzu right now. Sun Tzu is joined by a series of noteworthy characters. Um, first and foremost is Zhou Yu. So Zhou Yu is his best friend. They were born in the same year. They knew each other from a very young age and were very, very close friends. While Sun Jian was campaigning for uh, Yuan Shu against Dong Zhuo and against the Yellow Turbans, Zhou Yu put up Sun Tzu and his family and even went so far as to sort of honor Lady Wu, Sun Tzu's mother, as his own mother. Um, when uh, Sun Jian was dead and when Sun Tzu was off uh, in Wu Jing's territory, uh, Zhou Yu stayed in his home territory around Anhui province uh, today and built up a small militia and sort of helped his family in the area. But when Sun Tzu was uh, ordered by Yuan Shu to go off and attack Lu Yao, who was pressing uh, on Sun Tzu's uncle's uh, territory, Wu Jing's territory. He, Sun Tzu wrote to Zhou Yu and said, hey, this is my plan. And Zhou Yu said, all right, I'm coming, buddy. And brought his militia and joined him. And together, they then started the plan that would eventually lead to the kingdom of Wu. Um, so yeah, very important strategist, supporter, and best friend of Sun Tzu. Um, you also get Huang Gai. Now, Huang Gai is obviously famous for the fire ships in Red Cliffs. But historically, Huang Gai had a really tough upbringing. So he was orphaned at a very young age. He was poor. He relied on his grandparents to sort of look after him. Um, he didn't get the schooling that other people might expect for relatively uh, higher up uh, status in the society at the time. So he had to study all of the military arts and educate himself at home. Um, he worked very hard and was quite talented, so he did get the position of a minor official in his local commandery office um, before eventually being employed as, as an assistant to the office of the three ducal ministers. Um, but his big break came when in the 180s he joined Sun Jian in the campaign against Dong Zhuo um, and fought in some battles alongside Sun Jian there. Um, he was promoted a few times within Sun Jian's uh, forces uh, but after Sun Jian's death, he was forced to sort of wait a little bit and work for Yuan Shu like a lot of uh, Sun Jian's former soldiers um, until Sun Tzu came of age and came back and joined Yuan Shu. Then he rejoined Sun Tzu and that's where it starts now. He's just about to rejoin Sun Tzu and all of the great deeds he did later come later. You also get Chong Pu. Now, Chong Pu was one of Sun Jian's more senior officers as well. Um, he was renowned for being very good looking, resourceful, and extremely well versed in military strategy. Uh, Chong Pu was again another minor official, but who, who joined Sun Jian um, to basically go and fight against the Yellow Turbans. That's where it all started. He's one of the earliest officers to join him. Um, and he also fought in the coalition against Dong Zhuo, and he fought a lot. He led independent troops. Um, as well as fought alongside Sun Jian, and he was wounded many, many times during the battles. Um, similarly to Huang Gai, after Sun Jian's death in 191, he stayed with Yuan Shu, and then as this game starts, he's just about to join Sun Tzu. So yeah, two very important generals of Sun Tzu's father's generation, a little bit older, a little bit uh, wiser heads who he can rely on, very steady and with a good relationship with the men. Finally, we have Sun Quan. Sun Quan is Sun Tzu's younger brother who has not come of age yet at this start date, though he comes of age uh, after a few turns in the game. I mean, it's after a few turns is probably underselling it. He comes of age eventually in the game. Um, and he obviously, after Sun Tzu dies, he is the heir and he becomes the head of the Wu faction. So yeah, look out for him later on. 
Anyway, I think that's enough about the basic historical period. You start off as a vassal of Yuan Shu, um, and your aim is to take over the Southlands and become an independent faction and keep Sun Tzu alive as long as possible. Right, let's get into the game. Yeah,自从破虏将军谢氏以来，主公以一己之力稳住局势，保护了孙家基业。然而战乱未息，天下依旧动荡不安。先下我等正受袁术恩惠，但此人欲壑难填，又才智不足，早晚要以百屠地。我等需尽
Currently, with luck as it is, he has plus 40% movement range, minus 15 retinue upkeep, and plus 15 military supplies. As it ticks down, you'll get 30, 10, 13, 25, 8, 11, blah, 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 all the way down to just supplies. And then he dies. Okay? Achieving Sun Tzu's ambitions grant powerful bonuses while also delaying his luck from running out. The faster it is stopped, the more of his luck will stay with him forever. So here are the Legacy of Wu ambitions, and you can see what we have here. Here is just an example. Secure the mountains, so we need to take Shindu. If we take Shindu, uh, take the town, we get five luck. So that's just five straight up. It's not like a per turn, it's just five. Um, Lumberyard, we get five, and Shindu Fishing Port, we'll get five. If we have all of them, we have plus three public order, and we have plus two reckless luck per turn. So that will give us 15 luck, which is a turn and a half, but plus two per turn, which will reduce the loss to negative eight rather than negative 10. And as you can see, you'll get it for a lot of the things you complete. You'll get more luck per turn. Not all of them give you luck per turn. I think some of them don't give you luck per turn. Like this, for example, just gives you uh, 25 instinct, 25 resolve. Um, this one does. But yeah, not all of them give it, and you can see their... Uh, their uh, rewards here, but they're useful, okay? Um, very, very useful. Finally, focus on recruiting powerful characters to your court. So what this means is not go hunting through the uh, people who appear per turn. You will get given tasks, and these tasks will allow you to gain powerful characters who were historically part of the Wu faction, okay? So you'll look out for those as we go on. Now, first mission, Yuan Shu orders the conquest of Xu province. So long as you still swear fealty to Yuan Shu, his orders must be obeyed. As such, you must now march against Lu Kang at his command, then continue on to Xu province. Yet although you go in Yuan Shu's name, do not forget to keep an eye beyond that to the potential personal gain. So we need to take out Lu Kang. Lu Kang, uh, the Lu faction, were a very powerful faction in the area, a very powerful clan. Um, actually, Lu Xun, who was a very famous general for uh, Wu was part of that clan. So they don't always have such a negative relationship as to be at war with each other. The reward is your father's general's return to serve you. Yuan Shu supplies and growing might. It doesn't actually state who these generals are, but they are two of the guys we saw earlier, Chong Pu and Huang Gai, plus a third who didn't get any love of um, unique portraits, and that is Han Dang. Now, Han Dang's an interesting character because he was a mercenary, okay? Um, he wasn't actually uh, directly linked to uh, Sun Jian in the same way as Chong Pu or Huang Gai, who, who were subordinates of him. He was a mercenary who was a major of separate command, um, who was recruited by Sun Jian to fight against the Yellow Turbans and Dong Zhuo, okay? So, um, yeah, he's, he's a different chap altogether different idea but he does like historically he did eventually swear fealty to uh the sun clan um and become a major player for Wu. but yeah first order of business is to conquer shu province but before we do any of that i just want to show you something we only have lady Wu, our mother in the court okay um and we have these legacy of Wu ambitions so anyone who has this tiger that is related to a legacy of Wu, and that would be a task we need to complete to keep luck high or to give us other bonuses. Ancillaries, check these out first. They're not, I mean, that, that's not a bad initial setup, actually. So we also have some other things here. If we look followers, we haven't got anything, but we do have the Imperial Jade Seal. So historically, um, Sun Jian actually gave the Imperial Seal to Yuan Shu, um, because he was a general of Yuan Shu. Uh, Yuan Shu may have put a lot of pressure on him through sort of friendly kidnapping of his of Sun Jian's family and all the rest. But um, <clears throat> what what happened was Sun Jian handed it over to Yuan Shu, so Yuan Shu already had that. But for the sake of the story, uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which is what this game takes a lot of its uh, influence from, though it does take a lot from history as well, is Sun Tzu has it and Sun Tzu trades it for troops and generals, okay? It's not historically true, um, but as you have it, equip it for now. You may as well. This we can use later, which would be quite handy. Um, what you can do before anything else starts is you can have a look here, and you've got uh, Sun Quan as your faction heir. 
Now Sun Quan is 12, it's going to take many years before he comes of age. If you wish to, what you can do, hello, is make her your heir. It's going to give you um, some other bonuses that you won't get from uh, Sun Quan until he comes of age. It includes the available assignments, uh, satisfaction and reduction in corruption. Um, you also notice you have Chancellor and Grand Commandant. Save those for now. Now for Lady Wu, because she is um, now our heir, we're going to give her this. Because that's actually going to work quite nicely with her because of her uh, commander status. It gives her a nice boost to authority. And then before anything else can happen with Sun Tzu, you need to take Lu Jiang. And Lu Jiang is a nice large town with just him and their garrison. See here, it's not hugely impressive, but you have the least well-equipped siege force in the world. So, yeah, expect to lose some men, but Sun Jian needs to be reckless. Right, quick save, just in case OBS, because it's just updated, has some issues, and uh, I'll see you in the fight. All right, so as you can see, we have a cavalry force. They have a lot of towers. We have no fire arrows whatsoever. Um, this this really isn't ideal for us at all. So we need to be very quick in how we deal with this. So my plan, we'll see what comes of it, is to try and spread their defenses out just a touch with my cavalry, which can quickly reorder as needed. We do have the mercenary axemen who have shields, which will have its uses. Um, we have our chaps here. Unfortunately, they can't do loose function and they have no fire arrows. We have our lance cavalry, which are pretty good. We have raider cavalry, which are uh, quick. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not so keen on the raider cavalry, though they do get a lot of bonuses just because Sun Tzu. And we have Sun Tzu himself, who has flames of the phoenix melee attack, which is quite devastating. Right. Let's have a look, see where they are. They have some spears there, they have some archers there. Right. So, I think the best way to deal with this will be to move over here. Archers sit there for now. This cav can be ready over here. Sun Tzu also has the tendency to lose control. Um, and for me, I find that fantastically annoying because he does lose control precisely when you need him to focus on doing something useful, um, which is a major frustration of mine with the character. Right, Cav, move over here. So yeah, they're shooting at him. Ah, good, right, over here. <clears throat> sort of what we wanted. Go over here, take that. I'm not going to charge my cavalry in straight up here because these archers are just going to slaughter them. Um, but what we can do is sort of fight here. Take this territory. There we go. Just stop this shooting at our boys. How are we doing? We good? Right. Right in here. Fast as you like. We're going to lose some casualties doing that? No question. Right, over here. You're going to come right in their rear. <clears throat> These boys can now move forward. Though they're not going to be the world's greatest and most helpful. Quickly capture this. Oh, we don't need to capture it, actually. Come on. In you go, in you go, in you go. Right, they're running. Very nice, gang up on him. Our archers can now advance to a decent... Uh, why are you not going up these steps? Come on, lads. Quickly. Here.
There we go. There we go. <clears throat> Cavalry finally doing what it's told. Uh, we are absolutely dealing with him. Our archers are slaughtering up there. We can start to look at putting our heavier cavalry in the fight now. Want these boys to charge right through. Our cavalry here is taking a pounding, but they are just raiders, so it's not the end of the world. Right, they've broken. Mm. In you come. Come on into those archers. Round. Other cavalry goes. So come on. You gonna duel? No, he doesn't want to duel. That's a shame. We've got that territory there. Very nice. Raider Cav, come on, focus. Focus, focus, focus. Their Raider Cav, why everything's catching fire is because Raider Cav just naturally do that as they advance around the territory. Um, right. This place is starting to fall. As I said, it was going to be just a touch bloody. Come on, chase them. Don't want them coming back. Just want to kill a bunch of them. Sort of encourage them not to return, if possible. How are we doing? He's dead, good. Which means, Sun Tzu, you can come over this way. Think as well. Axes. Uh, archers, actually. Can we just form up here? Nice. All that's done. The whole place is burning down because the Raider Cavalry are having a party. We're going to move our Lance Cav up there. How are we doing with this? That's not great. Not great. Now, Flames of the Phoenix. Boom. Massive damage there. Absolutely massive damage. So cavalry unit just preparing. These boys, can you shoot them, please? Would like that G militia, are they? Yeah, G militia, just, just break them. Archfire should do the trick. 15 seconds, and we'll be able to drop another one. He's killing them for fun now. Yeah, the archers are going to absolutely slaughter that G militia. No shields, no real armor. Boom. One more time. Uh, possibly a touch less good than other attempts we've made. Right. You can come here. You can come here. <clears throat> nice. So, yeah. And so it's starting to break, but these boys in here should help him out. There we go. There they go. Fantastic. A little bit bloody, sure. But uh, we won. Yeah, 230 or dead. 400 odd surviving. Liu Kang, sincere, distinguished, clever. Nothing of value to steal. Your money is going to tank because the amount of officers you're going to get in. Um, I wouldn't kill him personally. I'd just let him be released because the money is better than anything else. You're going to occupy this settlement anyway. Uh, Yuan Shu has ordered the conquest. We have done it, uh, which is fantastic. 
and Lu Kang has been destroyed, so he's going to become an officer that other people can potentially recruit. Now, Wu Jing, who is our uncle, has uh, our, our uh, the little brother of our mother, I believe, um, has requested assistance in combating Liu Yao and his growing forces. Guan Shu has provided you with the funds to raise and maintain an army for several seasons. However, you must, as you muster, scouts deliver reports that there is another southern general in the area, one building his own army. This general, it is said, claims to be an old friend of your family. So now we need to move any character to the following county, Yang Zhou Toolmaker. An old friend returns with his army, Treasury 2500, and Yuan Shu Supplies, which is reduction in mustering turns and reduction in recruitment costs, which is really, really nice. Now, thank you very much, advisor. Now, uh, Sun Tzu only has one old friend that we've been introduced to at all. Uh, and that is Zhou Yu. So we're going to shift over here next turn to pick up Zhou Yu. We now have a territory, Lu Jiang. Um, with this territory, you obviously you're going to start to feel, oh, I can do assignments, I can build up the territory. Don't. One of the things that's going to happen very, very quickly is Yuan Shu is going to say, hey, I fancy having Lu Jiang. Can you give it to me? So anything you spend on this territory, any investment you make, any assignments you do will be wasted. So just don't do it, right? You do have the option to say no to him and go to war. It's not worth it. It's really not worth it. So just don't bother. Let him take the territory. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, simply don't spend any money on it. What you can do, however, is start to look at doing uh, trade agreements. And you can trade with any of these chaps. Now, Yuan Shu gives you the best, uh, um, you know, like the biggest amount of money, okay? Um, the Han Empire, if you look at them, quite reliable. Now, you're going to have uh, this fishing port here controlled by Liu Yao. That's where your missions are going to take you first, to Xindu Fishing Port, okay? So, what you want to do is look and see where you can trade with that's also going to trade with this fishing port that isn't any of Xu Gong, Yang Bai Hu, Xue Li, Xu Zhao, Wang Lang, or Liu Yao, because you're going to be fighting them. Wu Jing is a good bet, your uncle, but his trade value is the least. Han Empire has the largest trade uh, network. Eventually, however, you're going to be at war with them. Yuan Shu, you're going to understand that you are going to risk losing trade for a short period of time, depending on wars. But he gives you the most bang for your buck right now, and it's easy to restore trade. You may lose it for one turn, but you should get it back later. So I would go for you, Yuan Shu, and I would also use this opportunity to request regular payments per turn, because this is going to help you with your deficit, which will be incoming very soon, right? 131, can we do any more? No, not quite. So yeah, 130, that's fine. We'll do this per turn. You'll see that you could receive a marriage. Don't. What you're looking for with Sun Tzu is the two Chows, Da Chow and Xiao Chow, okay? So... Um, don't get married until they pop up and get married to them. Unless you really want to get married, you know, uh, it is up to you. We now have Chancellor and Grand Commandant. Now, if you notice with uh, these, you'll say uh, at the bottom, it says the effects of Sun Tzu's ministers depend on their rank. At rank three, the base effects of their ministerial positions are applied. At rank five and rank eight, the effects are improved. So don't put in anyone who is not rank three or above. Unfortunately, Huang Gai, Chongpu, and Han Dang are all rank three. So you can choose who you put in here. Uh, it doesn't really matter who you choose for these positions, but I would say that Chongpu is probably a better administrator than Huang Gai or Han Dang. So my preference would be to throw in people like Huang Gai and Han Dang. And what this does is give you available assignments, which is no use right at this moment in time, but there's a reduction in character salary which is quite useful. As you see, all these guys cost 140 and you're going to get loads of them. So let's chuck in Huang Gai uh, in, as Chancellor and Grand Commandant. He have, doesn't matter which one you choose, but Han Dang is the going to get the big, biggest satisfaction change and Chongpu we can sort out later. Uh, plus two available armies and reduction in recruitment cost. So chuck him in there and have fun. Now you can also look at your faction council, invoke the council, provincial famine, uh, at the start of your turn have at least 15 food, and war on all fronts, raise a force. Well, that's going to be particularly easy to solve in the near future. Right. What we can do, if you want to raise a force straight away, is recruit someone to your army. 
Now, who you want to choose is up to you. For me, I go for Chong Pu. Um, I think he best suits this type of setup. Uh, Sentinel with the Vanguard can work quite nicely. If you want to as well, you can throw in um, your mother, Lady Wu, as well. Um, some people also suggest replacing the expensive units to save on your money. You can do. If you are worried about finances, by all means, replace the Lance Cavalry because they're really expensive. You could even look at replacing the Mercenaries with other less good infantry because you'll see he, uh, these guys cost 102 and 60. Whilst these guys, I know they're not axes, but similar costs to our axe band um, for uh, same militia. These are 149 and these are 123. You can replace them by all means. Uh, don't don't uh, worry too much if you want to. For me, I think if you're really, really quick, then you don't need to worry about replacing them too much. Okay? Now, other than that, expect to lose 10 reckless per, uh, luck per turn for a while now. Our income is going to be absolutely sunk very, very quickly. But next turn, main thing, we shift over to young Joe and we see how many men Joe Yu is going to bring to our force. Right, see you in next turn. Turn two, you have some diplomacy that you don't need to worry about because it's happening up in the north and that's not our problem. Again, the emperor juggling starts. Most important thing you have is this dilemma, his father's son. Yuan Shu is willing to allow your father's former generals to join you in a campaign against Liu Yao. In return, he asks that you give him the Imperial Seal, which you inherited from your father. So you can keep it, um, which is going to reduce diplomatic relations. You're going to have uh, declared uh, independence. There's going to be war. You'll get a huge amount of luck per turn, which is great if you don't want some sort of die that quickly. But this is a fight that you are not prepared for. You can win it um but it's very very tough so what i do is just give it away and we get the supplies which is continuation of the recruitment cost and the mustering turn uh, reductions so yeah what use is a lump of jade you have your fellow soldiers who are all you need absolutely right so Sun Tzu has now lost the, the bonuses that he was getting from that but that's no big deal don't worry about it too much diplomacy character developments all of these guys here don't worry you're gonna get so many characters you are not going to know what to do with it. You're going to lose your mustering for moving into Yangzhou. Don't worry about that at all. Just head over here. Uh, what you want to do is try and move as close to the river, uh, the Yangzhou River, as you can. Boom! And here we have Wu Jing calls for aid against uh, Liu Yao. Our old friend returns. We have more money and we have Yuan Shu's supplies. And we have a foothold on the Yangzhou. As your army is marching, another force is spotted ahead of you, on the approach. At the head of this army is Zhou Yu, an old family friend. The two of you speak at length, and after much discussion, he proclaims that he is willing to do his part to help you achieve great and noble deeds. He suggests that, as a first step, you cross the Yangzhou and secure a foothold for future operations. So now we need to capture Xindu uh, Fishing Port. If we capture Xindu Fishing Port, we get Lu Fan. Lu Fan is a very, very talented strategist that uh, will help us greatly. Um, mission issued a wealth of knowledge. Your court has grown rapidly in a short space of time. And due to the chaos in China has experienced of late, everyone within it has grown wise by virtue of having to learn so quickly. By focusing that wisdom upon a specific character, they will learn more in one day than they would otherwise in 10 long years. So we need to reach rank four with one character and we get a bunch of bonus experience for Sun Tzu. Now, we have Chong Pu, Zhou Yu, Hong Gai, Han Dang. And if you look, we have on one of these um here have a rank for vanguard who is over 40 and have a rank for sentinel who is over 40 well chong pu and huang gai are both 40 and we need both of them to be rank four basically okay and this is going to give us plus one rick sunk per turn and plus five melee damage for all shock cavalry now, how we do that is we go here let's choose uh chong pu actually because he's in our army so we may as well focus on him and here you have a button called share expertise you need to have 50 uh, shared expertise to do this. And how you can check it, it's this number here. Okay, so we have 64, so we have easily enough. So, uh, Chong Pu, share expertise, confirm, boom. Now, if we go back to him, a wealth of knowledge, he has now reached rank four. And if we look, that means they have both leveled up. So, what do we want for Chong Pu? Well, tenacity of steel makes him a great killer. 
This is a uh, firing rate, which is quite nice. We can't unfortunately get fire arrows or anything like that. And he also has zeal over here. Now for me, I do love my tenacity of steel for my um, sentinels. I find that makes them really effective. Sun so on the other hand, can now get fury, which is uh, morale in enemy territory when commanding, because that's what we're gonna be doing a lot of. This zeal is really, really useful, but you can get it with Chonku later, so I wouldn't worry about it. And Sun Tzu isn't gonna last forever. So we have that now. Um, right. Zhou Yu is now here. Now, Zhou Yu is quite cool. He has fire arrows. He has night battles. He has the ranged armor piercing damage. He has a uh, very nice mathematician who, you know, possibly could be better off given to someone else eventually, but uh, we may as well keep it with him. He um, has his own unique armor and he has a noble's sword. We don't really have anything in the way of spectacular weaponry, unfortunately, right now. Which says catch ranks gained. Uh, Joe Yu also has his own force, which isn't bad. Some arch militia and some saber militia. So he will be able to help us in the upcoming fight. Now what we're going to do, change to march stance. And we're going to try and get on this river. Because we want to attack Shindu fishing port right from next turn. Okay, that's why we moved as close to the river as we could. Click onto it now. Next turn we can go straight for the river. So we can take this and get Lu Fan. Right, see you next turn. Turn three has started with Yuan Shu declaring Wan He Yi. He always declares Wan He Yi relatively early on. It's not always on turn three. Now this does provide an opportunity in diplomacy because you can request to join the war and just get Yuan Shu to keep giving you money to join his wars. You don't actually have to fight in them. Now you do want to be a little bit careful because you don't want to join a war against someone who potentially is a threat to you, but He Yi isn't. You're not realistically going to fight him. So um, he is someone who you can use to get more money out of Yuan Shu. Now, remember I said that you're not going to keep Lu Jiang? You're not going to. So here it is. What is owed? Though Yuan Shu promised that Lu Kang's lands would be yours, he now wants to take them and appoint his own administrator. Such is his right as your lord, but can such dishonesty be tolerated? So you can rebel, and you'll get a lot of luck, which is fantastic. Um, or you can keep the diplomatic relations and take the supplies. The supplies are useful, and remember, your aim is the south. So hand it over, let him have it, it's fine. You're going to lose the trade, obviously. Uh, Legacy of Wu has popped because we Increase Chengpu to rank four. Now we just need to get Huang Gai uh, up there. Han Dang's a little bit too young right now. He's a couple of years younger than the others. Um, and we'll get plus one Reckless Luck and we'll get plus five melee for damage for Shot Cavalry. Uh, trade has now been suspended as I said it would be. And you can see it's tanking our economy. Um, there's not much else you can actually do about it. So don't worry too much. Just remember that Reckless attacking will help you, okay? It will absolutely help you. So what we're going to do is shift him to uh, a uh, stance where he can attack. You'll notice that their army has buggered off in the meantime, which makes life a lot easier. And we're going to go here and we're going to attack. It's a nice decisive victory. Um, I'm not going to fight this on screen. I'm going to fight this off screen because I like to... Uh, minimize my casualties with Sun Tzu and you can lose a lot of casualties with the auto resolve even a decisive victory especially a raider cav and you want to keep all the units up and fighting so yeah I will see you after the battle there we go uh, loss of 112 men I did bring uh, Joe you up but you didn't see that on the recording I put him in march stance and he can reach the settlement too just to support and he has fire arrows which makes it a lot more simple um, and we've taken it and we have now got Lu Fan, which is really good news. Legacy of Wu, uh, secure the mountains. So we now are encouraged to capture the Lumberyard and the capital. <clears throat> Impressing the two Jungs, the next mission. Zhou Yu tells you that in order to capture the Southlands, you will have need of the two Jungs. These men allegedly have the talent to chart the course of heaven and earth. Although they are currently living in obscurity, hoping to elude the chaos consuming the realm, they may be convinced aid you should you sufficiently impress them. So we need to capture Jianye, a small city which is up here, held by Xue Li. And if alive, Zhang Hong and Zhang Zhao will support us and we will get growing might. 
Another mission. Take from Liu Yao what you need. Your family are fierce warriors all. Now, this must be proved once again. Liu Yao is a threat and cannot be tolerated to even remotely interfere in your plans. Draw your sword and march. His time has come. Capture and occupy Poyang Town and Tai Shi Tzu, who, uh, quite a famous commander um, in this game, will join your court. Liu Yao is also the chap who um, was attacking your uncle. So there's a familial effort here. Clear the mountains of tigers and villains. The mountains are home to some of the most dangerous bandits in the kingdom. These criminals are allowed to remain unchecked. They will inevitably descend upon your lands and terrorize the people. Capture and occupy Shindu town and you will get Lu Meng. So another uh, very solid sentinel for you. So that is your set of missions right now to get a whole bunch of soldiers. Now, I would not spend any money on upgrading this town whatsoever. It just isn't worth it. What you need to do is get troops. You want cheap troops. You want troops that are going to help you really quickly conquer territory. So I'd pump in some soldiers into his army. Um, he can't recruit anyone right now because he's in March stance. If you wanted to as well, what you could do is bring in another one of your generals. Um, personally, I would wait a turn and bring in either Huang Gai or Han Dang into Zhou Yu's army. Um, and then for Sun Tzu's army, I would bring in, uh, where is he? Lu Fan next turn as well, because he isn't a bad chap to have. Actually, if we can we look at him right now. So he is more of a administrator than anything else, but after one upgrade, he will be able to get flaming shot, which is super useful. Really, really useful. Uh, if you want quick upgrades, you'll see that you are getting five shared experience per turn. So it's going to take a while before you can use this to kick up uh, a level for another character. You'll also see that your trade is still suspended. Hopefully it will regain afterwards, but you don't know. If you do want money, like I said before, where is Yuan Shu? Uh, you can say to him, um, I will aid you against He Yi. Confirm. That's 9.8. Get whatever you fancy. You want a military G? Can give you a military G. Um, he doesn't seem to have anything else here. You can request food, not that he has much. You can request regular payments which will be really useful, but he's already paying you a little bit, so you're not going to get vast numbers. Still, that ain't bad, actually. And you can use this for everyone he declares war on. So that's going to help a little bit. Um, we're against He Yi. He Yi's going to be destroyed very, very quickly. Lots of people go for him. So yeah, don't worry about that. Uh, actually needing to fight him at all. Okay, right. I will uh, see you in the next turn. So turn four starts off with diplomacy that you don't need to worry too much about. But more importantly, it starts off with a reform choice. You have territory, you need income, so go for foreign invoice and get the trade agreement. Head over to diplomacy, have a look for who's available to trade. Your best two options here are Kongrong and Shushie. Okay, Kong Rong's always a good person to trade with. It prevents him going to war with you. You always get a relatively good deal. My favorite, however, in this case is Shishi, and not just because he gives you a few extra uh, bits of gold per turn, but also because he is down in the Southwest, uh, down sort of over here, and he has a couple of vassals. He's gonna become a relatively major power in this area. He's not gonna be able to stand up to you, but he's a threat, and you don't want him siding with the people you're at war with. So if you have a better relationship with him, it works out in your favor. So negotiate a deal with him. See if you can push him for a little bit of uh, regular payment per turn, because that's where you're getting hit in the pocket the most. He's not going to be able to pay you a huge amount. Um, 97, yeah, it's not bad. And that's going to bring in some money, because you still don't have that uh, thing with your shoe up and running yet. Don't worry about peace or military access or any of that stuff. Unless it's with someone who really doesn't matter. Like someone like Yang Fong is all the way up here. Um, I don't think he's actually going to be able to pay you very much for it anyway. Uh, 50 Kui per turn. But yeah, you can give him military access. Don't matter. He'll pay you a little bit, but he's going to be destroyed eventually. So if it's any of these guys around you, ignore it. Okay? But if it's someone up in the north, like if Gong Shenzhen or Cao Cao comes up saying they want something, that's fine. 
Uh, Liu Chong probably not because Yuan Shu is going to declare war on him and you don't need to worry about people of merit either. Now, you have a choice. Do you go for Poyang or do you go for Jian Ye? If you go for Poyang, you're going to get, uh, you're going to start to get some uh, important characters joining you, which is quite nice. If you go for Jian Ye, you're going to get some seriously important characters joining you, which is also quite nice. Xue Li is much less of a threat than Liu Yao. Liu Yao has a little bit more territory, as you can see. He has a base that he can build up and he will have an army. You already saw one of his armies run away from Xindu Fishing Port. They're in Poyang right now. And he, if he hasn't moved there already, he will move there next turn himself with his own army. So my suggestion is you deal with him first. Now you can move all the way into uh, his territory with this army. Don't feel obliged to do that. If you want to recruit more troops, recruit more troops. And that's precisely what I'm going to do. Because I'll be able to hit him next turn. So I'm also going to recruit... Uh, here he, ooh, where is he? Uh, Lu Fan. He's right at the top. Um, into this army. Lu Fan, as we discussed earlier, in a turn uh, well, one level up, he's going to get Flaming Shot, which can be pretty damn useful. Um, you can always switch him out for another strategist later on, if you wish. But I find him quite handy in the early game. As for Zhou Yu, um, I'm going to move him down as well. Just because two armies going in, it's going to make life a little bit easier. Other than that, there's nothing else you really want to be doing this turn. Unless Yuan Shu has declared war on someone else you fancy, which he hasn't. Um, but if he does, then you can take money for uh, helping him in his war. And by helping, I mean not taking part whatsoever. Um, but... It's time for turn five. So, Yuan Shu has declared war on Zhang Ba. This is someone else we can reliably not go to war with. Um, and our money is starting to run out. So it's not a bad thing to head over to Yuan Shu um, on this tab here and say, hey, big man, we can aid you in another war. You want to fight Zhang Ba? We're okay with this. And he's going to give us more stuff. Now, uh, we could probably do with like cash up front a little bit too. So let's see how much he's willing to offer us before it starts to drop. Uh, it's starting to drop a little bit there. Regular. Oh, no, sorry. Not me. You uh, receive regular payments. 2.9. There we go. That's not bad. We'll take that. Okay. Which is quite nice. You'll notice that the small army has left Poyang um, and Liu Yao is now there. Liu Yao has Tai Shi Tzu. So, um, and Shi. So we're gonna go straight in for the kill here. So first thing, we're leading with Sun Tzu. Always lead with Sun Tzu because Sun Tzu has a um, requirement to uh, take over five cities, duel five people, blah, 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 blah. And then we're going to follow up with Zhou Yu as the reserve. Now, bear in mind, this army here is not going to stay seated. It's going to come and it's going to attack Shindu. So you are eventually going to want to recruit an army here that can hold. You don't need a huge army because this garrison plus a general should be enough. So we're going to recruit Lady Wu there later to hold that off when, he, uh, when we've won this. Um, and then after that, we might uh, send a counterattack with Zhou Yu, or we might push on here, depending on the current situation. Anyway, let's get into this fight. Okay, so here we are ready to take out this town. Now remember, they have Taishi Tzu, they have uh, Liu Yao, so that's two pretty solid sentinels, plus a strategist. It's not going to be that straightforward. We need to uh, get Zhou Yu and his forces to uh, rush up this way because he has fire arrows, which can be extraordinarily useful. And we want them in loose formation. We want fire and we want them here. You boys can come up here. Uh, these axes, we are going to want them in shield wall for later because they'll be useful. And I think Chong Pu over here because he can give the uh, ranged deflection buff, which will be helpful. Really, really helpful. So as you can see, this is a, just a death trap. They have a lot of archers 
Um, these are actual archers as well. Two lots of actual archers, two lots of arch militia. So their arch force, although it isn't as impressive as mine, is still very solid. Uh, Chumpu, you don't need to be taking damage if you don't really want to. Just move out a touch. Um, these chaps with fire arrows, they're going to take a little bit of a kicking. Um, these archers have more range than uh, arch militia. Uh, 200 as opposed to, what, 180. So that's not great. They have a few more arrows as well, so that's not great. doesn't really work in my favor. But I need to burn down some of these towers. So let's move Chongpu forward. Uh, this lad, if he can go for that one, that will be fantastic. And you go for this one. Then we're just going to wait. Chongpu can take a little bit of a beating. Um, he's no slouch. Just wait and wait and wait. Um, and then when our lads start to come in range... Now... Right, we can pop that, and that's going to help us deal with it. So this one is going up, that one's going up. These boys are going to take some damage now from their archers. Come on, advance forward. Right, that's going up in flames, good. Right, everyone back, everyone back. So these guys have run, unfortunately. Um, but... So it makes sense. Remember to put them back into loose formation. They took a chunk of damage, but it's not end of the world level damage. Now we're going to shift up this way. Uh, we need to take out this one. So let's ride around here. You can just advance forward as well. Uh, oh. Come on, forward forward seriously guys wake up here we go um pop that just to give everyone a little bit of a helping hand oh my god what on earth are they doing why are they not advancing i found that with this patch sometimes i tell people to do something and they just don't do it they just stop and gaze at scenery and i for the life of me, do not know why. Right, are we ready now? Good, we're ready. There we go. Right, that's going up, which means you chaps can return. Your job's done. You can also return. I think your job as a decoy is done. These boys can deal with some damage. Um, which they're going to take. They're going to take quite a lot of damage. Let's fall back. You're not needed there anymore. So one, two, three, four, five, six lots of archers form a line back here these things are going to burn down and then first port of call is going to be focusing down those bastards who are doing us all of this damage we're going to lose some men doing it no question their range is to there so how are we doing? Everyone, pretty much. Right, let's go. He's lost a lot of health now. He's about to lose just a tiny bit more. Right. I want weight of arrows, because hopefully we'll be able to kill them faster than they can kill me in huge numbers. There we go. They're starting to drop more significantly. Mm, it's not enough. Fire arrow is going to help with the morale. Come on. Ah, one of my fire arrow boys is running away. Ah, they've come back though. It's nice of them. Very nice of them. They're still dying though. Why are they still dying? Oh, because they're still in the fight. And they... it irritates me that when they reform, they're not in loose. Um, there we go that's that group of archers destroyed oh, not quite destroyed they've come back keep killing them keep killing them keep killing them
Right. One of them's gone for good. That's a shame. It's a real shame. Right, they're out. Completely gone. These boys have come back. Uh, Chompu, we don't need you. What we do need, however, is to reform over here. Just so we're out of the way of these chaps who have uh, the range advantage on us. And we'll just gang up on this unit here. See if we can do it some real hurt. The more hurt we do, the easier it is for our melee infantry, obviously. We're still going to be advancing under a little bit of fire because there's not much we can do about these chaps. Um, and we don't have a uh, turtle formation shield unit, um, like spear guards, for example, that can just suck in all the arrow fire and not take any casualties. Anything we do now, we are going to start to take casualties. Liu Yao is no slouch. He may only be rank two, but he really is no slouch. Um, as far as dueling, uh, Taish Sir is someone we could duel. I do not advise it. Uh, I don't think Sun Sir is in a position to really win that fight. Sentinels are just better at dueling than vanguards in almost every possible way. Alright, that G infantry, come on. Away with you now. I'm trying to make sure they just go route Damn, some of them are out of ammunition already right they're gone focus on these chaps please there we go arrows coming in that is Toshitsu doing his uh, special Right, now I think it's time to start arranging the attack parties. Uh, these chaps here have unfortunately decided they want to play. Alright. You chaps here as well. Alright, kill them off. And basically, all we're doing is anyone who comes into range, we're trying to do as much damage as we humanly can. They have, interestingly, opened up here. Which I'm sort of fine <laughs> with. They're moving this G-Infantry unit down. Um, let's focus that G-Infantry unit. Because they'll take more casualties than the guys with shields. Oh, no, 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 you don't advance. Simple idea being, kill as many of these boys as we can. Because <clears throat> they're the anti-cav units. And if we can uh, smash their anti-cav, then this is going to be a lot simpler. Huge amount simpler. You boys are good to go. Right. I think the time is now. We're going to advance with one unit here. We're going to advance with another two units here. Uh, we're going to follow with the Sabres. Sun Tzu and Chung Pu are going to head over this side. Uh, Joey Lufan will be here. We've got fire raining in. I think it's time. Go. You're going to break off into this. Right. Run. I'm going to wait a second for my guys to actually get in range. Do that. Over this side, however, we can start to move cavalry. Now, they've pulled these uh, G infantry away. That's going to be quite useful. In, in, in. Everybody in. You advance up. You can come here. You can come here. 
Right, ready to cav. How are we feeling? Straight up, please, boys. Uh, Chongpu. Wow. That is Uh Sorry, that's Lu Yao who has just done that. That is uh, not hugely surprising, but still a tiny bit surprising. I wasn't expecting him to go down so quickly. These boys are now in. So in we go. Lance Cav, I want you over here as well. Because we're going straight for these. In we go. In we go. Okay, we're breaking them here. Just a touch. Out you come. Right. You come down this way. You keep marching up this way. Chung pull your back so you'll be useful, if not anything else. In, in, in. Seriously, don't just stand there. There, excellent. Broken them. Alright, let's deal with him. Right. You're up this way, please. Come on, push through now. You can focus on him. You can focus on him. But the rest of you, I need you to push through. You as well. In you come, in you come. Right, this fight over here isn't going wonderfully, but we are winning against Liu Yao. How much health do you have left? 8.2? Right, you can still get involved in that fight then. Nicely done. You boys, what are you doing? Don't get stuck. Come on. In we come, in we come, in we come. Rush, 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 rush. So, Sun Tzu, focus him down. You can come up here. Keep advancing. We find you're needed just to hang about there to keep the morale high. Cavalry, Raider Cavalry. Excellent job. Keep charging in here. You chaps, archers, just be prepared to come in. Just be prepared. Uh, Show you in here, please. Come on. Right, Raider Cav, over here. You boys, reform. And in a second, we're going to go right in the back. Now, what I'd quite like from you is to take that territory up at the top. You boys can come down here. Pull in Sun Tzu. There we go. You boys, round the back. You boys, round the back. Round the back. Jay, oh, come on, man. Chung Pu as well. Just get in there. You militia types over here. Uh, Sun Tzu, up here. Boys. Focus them down. Over here as well, please. And this is bloody, but it is going to be a victory because they're all beginning to break. Cavalry pull back. We're going to cycle again. Axes, you've done your job. Come up here. Come on, keep going, keep going, keep going. Chung Pu, stay and capture. Right, everyone, back in that fight. Oh, it's not the most impressive downhill charge I've ever seen. Um, but it'll do. Right, we just hold there. Uh, 8.6, so head off this way. You two, 
Let's go for him. They're all starting to break now. It's only a matter of time. A few seconds and we will have it. Long siege, I know, but we've done it. Claim victory. Got a lot of money. We can now occupy the settlement. He is dead. He's escaped. He's badly hurt. So, perfect scenario, actually, for taking that. And we've captured Poyang Copper Mine. We now need to capture the rest to uh, get this Reckless Luck and plus two assignments. Okay, kill the battle. Friends, yay, everyone's friendly. You gain Nancy, a noble sword. Well, that's nothing to um, sniff at, actually. How does that do for you? That is a much improved version of your current sword. So we're going to give it to Chongpu for now. Okay, so what happens after this is simple. Your armies are going to keep on mopping up uh, over here. My suggestion is you continue on with this army. Just fill it out slowly as time goes by. You're going to head straight for the town. Um, with this army, I would head back to Shindu. Uh, just to deal with Xue Li and maybe hire Lady Wu because she's cheap uh, or if you fancy being a little bit fancier bring in Handang or Huang Gai um, so we're going to start shifting him back in that direction right now uh, what I'm also going to do for him because I do have the money is just throw another couple of archers into his retinue um, but yeah hire another general in here Lady Wu is the cheapest like I said but Huang Gai is also quite cool to have around as is Handang so uh, yeah up to you uh, bring them into the force, deal with Xue Li, and then march on Xue Li's city over here. By the time you march on his city, you want to have replaced these boys here with more archers and probably a trebuchet. Um, and then whoever you've got between Huang Gai or Lady Wu or Handang, you want to put the infantry in their uh, setup as well as have their usual cavalry. Sun Tzu, next turn, march on the town. You're not going to reach it exactly in one go um i don't think or you might do because you're still in the high if it drops below you probably won't reach it it might take two turns to get there but it doesn't matter the town is relatively straightforward to take it has a very minimal garrison um if it has that officer in it he only has two archers so it doesn't really matter after you've taken poyang town you get taisha tzu um, which is fantastic and then in two turns you'll be able to take the iron mine and that is lu yao out of the game by that time, by the time you've taken all of that out, your economy is starting to look a little bit better. You're certainly getting more money. And don't forget to keep milking Yuan Shu. Eventually, Yuan Shu is going to declare himself emperor, in which case you can support his legitimacy for even more money. So keep milking him the whole time. By marching over here, you're going to have to cross over Xu Gong's territory. What I would suggest is on the way to Janya City is take out Xu Gong. Doesn't hurt. You're going to be at war with all of these chaps anyway. Just take him out. Take out Janya City. You'll get the two Jungs who are two strategists. One of them is higher level than the other. I think one of them is rank four. One of them is rank two. One of them is very more, much more warry. One of them is very much more uh, administration y. So, you know, pick the ones best for their roles. Uh, when it comes to assigning court positions because certainly you will unlock more court positions as you upgrade you don't unlock it necessarily through being ranked up through uh, second marquee marquee duke etc you get it through other means so as you start to get administrator we put in chunk um all of these director of offices records transactions finance physicians all of these things will give you different things put in anyone who is rank three or higher if they're below rank three don't look at them um, after you've taken Janier's small city, just take out Xu Zhao for the completion of Janier. Wang Lang is likely to deal with these yellow turbans and start to expand south. You're going to have to ignore him for now because soon after you take out Liu Yao, you're likely to start to have a war with Yan Baihu. So you're going to want to swing Sun Tzu's army back as fast as you possibly can. The bandits don't have the most impressive units, but Yan Baihu is very good and he does have a few white tiger units that are quite solid. If you're worried about defending, uh, you can always raise, whilst you conquer this and whilst this army is replenishing, you can raise a third force. You have the means to raise a third force. It'll be a little bit expensive and it may only be one officer with a full retinue, but it'll be useful um, and certainly useful when it comes to mopping up. So Yan Bai, who as it stands, is going down south here into the yellow turban. So he's gonna expand down this way, which does leave Shindu slightly open. 
if you can be quick with taking Jian Ye, um, and possibly leaving out Xu Zhao, maybe not declaring war on him, you can swing back and take out Xindu, his capital, um, very, very quickly uh, with Zhou Yu's army before going back to deal with Xu Zhao. That's uh, one option you have. If not, just rely on uh, Sun Tzu's army and whichever other retinue you uh, hire from Poyan to mop him up. He, like with most bandits, um, the morale for the bandit gangs, things like that, isn't that good. Uh, but they can sort of swarm you with numbers, so be aware of that. You also want to look at this as it ticks up. Uh, spend some experience on Huang Gai so that uh, you can complete that Legacy of Wu ambition. Be very, very helpful. Um, having taken out Poi Yang, you're going to start to see a reduction in your loss of luck. Um, so because we've just captured a place, we've got a reckless luck gain of five, so we're only losing five, but you'll get a permanent plus two increase, which would be quite nice. If you take Shindu, you get another permanent uh, increase. If you take Jian Ye, you'll get an increase. If you take Kwai Ji, you'll get an increase. Wang Lang is the person you want to destroy last because everyone else is in your way first. After you've taken out Wang Lang uh, and all of the chaps holding uh, Jian Ye and Liu Yao, you may st uh, and Yan Bai Hu, you may still have some yellow turbans to deal with, but they're a distraction. The next focus is going to be avenging your father and Huang Zhu. Now, Huang Zhu is a vassal of Liu Biao. So expect this to be a slightly bigger fight. You may want to call in allies and friends. People like Yuan Shu will certainly help you. And you'll see that this will allow you to take back Changsha. Now, Changsha is also held by the Han Empire. You can, by all means, declare war on the Han Empire and take out Changsha very, very quickly. But do bear in mind that if it's held by someone like Cao Cao or someone who's quite powerful, this may bring repercussions for you. Um, if it's not, if it's held by someone who's relatively mediocre or is too far north to threaten you, like Cao Cao may have other issues that may prevent him from threatening you, then take it out and peace out whenever. Don't matter. Um, the, the Han Empire doesn't really fight back. Wang Zhu, however, you'll be able to take him out relatively easily, but I have found by the time I get to the ability to declare war on Wang Zhu, Sun Tzu's luck is beginning to run out because you can stop it periodically here and there, but um, yeah, it'll be touch and go, or at least I have always found it's touch and go for me to take out Wang Zhu before uh, managing to, uh, yeah, before Sun Tzu dies. Now, there are a few events that you need to uh, look out for. So we've already gone over like turn 12, Yuan Shu will declare himself emperor. Turn 23, you should get an event where Da Chao and Xiao Chao will join you. It doesn't always happen. Certainly in my playthrough, I'm like turn 50, I still haven't got them to join me, which frustrates me a little bit. Um, but they should be there in turn 23. If they're not, reload, you know, spam it a couple of times, they should show up. Um, you're going to have a huge selection of officers by taking all of this area as well. But one of the uh, officer types you're going to be very low on is champions. So look out for, for good champions once you've cemented the Southlands, because you're going to need them. Um, turn 32, Sun Chuan comes of age. Uh, before that happens, you're going to want to give Lady Wu something else to do, so you can switch the air back to Sun Chuan. Sun Chuan is better than Lady Wu. Um, and turn 60, Sun Ren comes of age. Okay, But by that stage, whether Sun Tzu is alive or not depends on how quickly you've managed to conquer the rest of it. Um, you'll notice here, Xiangyang is a legacy of Wu ambition. That's actually related to Zhou Yu. So don't worry about pushing that for Sun Tzu. Okay? Right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed this. Um, we are, what, five turns in, and we have cemented our position here, and poor Yang is ready to fall. So, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty good start. Money is a problem. Keep milking Yuan Shu until you've cemented the Heartlands. Once you've cemented the Heartlands, your economy will take care of itself. Also remember, as these guys level up, so you want to be continually sharing experience as it comes in, you will unlock more and more things, which may even lead to uh, increased uh, trade uh, routes, stuff like that, which will all help your economy too. Okay, so don't stint. As soon as you see this tick over 50, spend it on someone. Right, hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. And yeah, 
I'll see you next time for more Total War. Thank you very much for joining me. Bye-bye.